Welcome back on side at Tucson RV Solar. This week we've got a Dutch Star 4369 made by Newmar. These things are awesome. So we gotta run through, well, it's locked. <laughs> we gotta run through all the same problem sets. A couple of things we're already able to take care of. Bathroom is not on a slide. And we have a small chase on the other side of the bathroom where we were able to actually drop our cable. This is it right here. Uh, to tie into our HDMI and USB cable to run to the Servo GX. And that took care of everything inside. Lots of things happening up on the roof, taking it up to 1200 watts. Has a GoPower solar panel up there, 190, we're gonna keep that. We got our battery bank, was right here. You can see them over there now. Six six volt batteries. Uh, we took those out. Also pulled out the old inverter cables, uh, which leaves us with our uh, 12 volt cable that's going to the uh, uh, bidirectional isolator, and then our other one that is the 12 volt for the rig. This is uh, all the different um, grounds for the coach itself. And then this is the, like the master chassis ground. And we're actually gonna reuse this and then tie this in as well. So that way we've got good continuity throughout. Um, now, where are we gonna put everything? We took all those batteries out. We're gonna put two Renogy 300 amp hour batteries in there. Uh, plenty of room for him to expand. He could actually put fit four of those in there in the long run. And then up top there is where the magnum inverter was we pulled that out we've already ran our cables and we're actually getting ready to mount the, our new inverter up there just enough room if we slide this all the way over to the left then we'll actually be able to fit another inverter should he decide he needs a little bit more power later on and then we're going to put the wall right here It'll be a 24 by 23 inch wall it'll have everything obviously except for the inverter uh, so that should make for a nice clean install. We keep the batteries close to the Lynx distributor bus bar, which is relatively close to the inverter. So minimizing on all of our voltage drop. Already ran our two cables here. That is the standard problem where we're going to put them. Uh, on this floor plan, actually a little bit easier. So we've got our transfer switch right there. Um, so relatively short run, just do a lot of uh, running cables underneath. Um, I think they're only 20 feet in length this time. And we didn't have to go through the firewall, thank goodness, because that tag axle would have been a nightmare. Uh, so with that, we're going to get this inverter mounted, get the wall mounted, and then look at what cabling we have left to do and move right ahead. Okay, so here we are up on the roof. You can see previous owner added Starlink so we're gonna move that guy back for sure we need to fit two panels here and the reason why panel already there that go power and then to get the rest of the 1200 watts gonna be pretty tough so we know that we can fit a panel here definitely fit a panel there so one two three four five this guy's in a funky place so if we move him and cut that off not completely but at least to where we can get our panel over it because we've got the the risers on there and we should be able to fit all six panels so what or totals of six so one two three four five six that's our going in assumption so let's uh do some final measurements and then we're going to start moving things and we'll see how she works out all right we are ending 
day three. We got all the old batteries, the old inverter, the old Starlink, the old solar controller. Put all those in the center bay for him to take with him to do what he wants. We've already got our two 300 amp hour energy batteries in place and wired up. And not quite finished in here. But doing our initial power on, we programmed the inverter, the Servo GX, the smart shunt down there, tested the solar. I said inverter, that's solar controller. The inverter is underneath there, programmed in as well. And so we're gonna come back tomorrow, we're gonna install our DC to DC charger, which will be here today. Uh, get it programmed and tested, and then do our final cleanup and do one big final test of uh, power draw, air conditioners, and all that. Um, and then clean up all this mess. So, end of day three, just waiting on a part so we can complete this guy, and then he will be ready to hit the road. All right, back on day three, we can see we got our solar up. These are the only places that we could actually fit these 200 watt panels. So we moved to Starlink, get back here, talk to the customer that he's not even gonna use Starlink. Uh, so we removed that guy. It was a Gen 1 plate anyway. Got these three wired in series for 600 watts. Got those three wired in series for another 600 watts and then paralleled where they go through the roof. Uh, you can see due to the uh, to the awning set, it actually is in, intruding so much on the roof that there's no way we can fit more panels there, there, there. And then trying to minimize impact on shading. There are low profile air conditioners. So, you know, these guys are never gonna get shaded. This one, maybe, if we got uh, Eastern sun, uh, but pretty good until the afternoon when the Gerard other side awning, it's not an awning, but that's the plate to look just like the Gerard awning. Uh, we'll start throwing shade on that guy. Same thing for these dudes over here. Uh, so if he's parked to the south, or the north better midday is gonna have awesome performance uh, but that's just what you deal with when you have these Gerard awnings they're phenomenal for awnings phenomenal look but uh, painful for solar unless you racked over the entire roof which is a whole nother situation but anyway 1200 watts done I'm gonna move down to the middle and finish that well it's pickup day for the Dutch star and we are all complete uh, I think one thing I didn't show you was the transfer switch wiring. Once we got it all done, you can see that it's the power into the inverter coming out, shooting off down there to where the inverter is, coming back, and then tying in to this box, which then runs up to uh, the breaker box. So everything nice and neat. There's a 600 amp hours of battery. Uh, up here we've got our uh, bidirectional isolator still in place because uh, it's still pushing through the 14 volts that we need. Got it going to another fuse and then bridging down to the 4 gauge cable which is going into the Orion DC to DC charger. Uh, 12 volt for the RV. And then common ground still in place, we we're able to reuse that. So saved a little bit of money on wiring, time, I didn't have to drill another hole. Uh, 600 amp hours of the Renogy mini core batteries. Uh, these are real good, bang for the buck is awesome. And then you can still fit another couple of batteries in there if he decides he wants to. And then for the install overall, mm -hmm. you can see got our board in place. Uh, solar from the roof going through the disconnect and then into the MPPT 15085. Easily handle is 1200 watts. Servo GX, the brains of the whole system, uh, tying together the MPPT and the DC to DC charger. Uh, so we can see all the charging going on as well as the smart shunt, which is over on the other side. And then we got our class T fuse, battery shutoff switch. Did the hack on the Linux distributor so you can see the lights and blowing fuses if he has one. And then we hid the inverter up there. Same place that the stock Magnum was, but you can see how much thinner the MultiPlus is. And there's just enough room up there to add another one. So should he decide he wants to 
uh, go with two inverters, then we can squeeze another one up there, which is also why I have the extra cabling in place, uh, which will give us room to add the multiple breakers that we would need to split things out into leg one, leg two, and run through the inverter and back. Uh, so kind of prepped for future in mind to add batteries, add inverter, uh, but the rest of it uh, prepped and ready to go. And I think he's going to be quite happy and ready to hit the road.